going to explore that journey to finding the spiritual understanding that helps us make sense of what's unfolding in life. Now, during our service, there'll be a time of prayer and a meditation and a moment of silence. I invite you to join us in that prayer experience at home and in that silence as well, as you let that divine presence touch you in depth. Thank you for joining us. Have a good day. of Walnut Creek. Please stand as you're able and join us in singing the welcome song. Let's do this. We've come to celebrate. We want to make you feel at home. And so we welcome you to unity of Walnut Creek. Forget your cares and woes, leave all your troubles all behind. Just open up your heart and we know you'll have a real good time. There's so much love and so much joy, you'll find whatever else you seek. You cannot help but fall in love with the unity of Walnut Creek. We've come to celebrate, we want to make you feel at home. And so we welcome you to unity of Walnut Creek. There's so much love and so much joy, you'll find whatever else you seek. You cannot help but fall in love with unity of Walnut Creek. We've come to celebrate, we want to make you feel at home. And so we welcome you to unity of Walnut Creek, to unity of Walnut Creek, to unity of Walnut Creek. Ever in God's presence, I 
Focusing our attention with our opening affirmation. Please join me prayerfully and powerfully speaking it together three times. Together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all loving goodness of God. Now take that loving breath again. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And now once again. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Now let's continue reading aloud our statement of unity. God's love is within each of us, guiding us to dynamically express our wholeness, wisdom, and abundance. We acknowledge the universal wisdom in the Christ teachings and in all spiritual paths. I now choose to open to the presence of divine love and to be changed at death. Throughout this sacred time, God is uplifting me and through my heart, the world. And now Sonia Marie will come up and share our daily word. The word for today is forgive. As part of its growth, the locust sheds its old skin releasing it to enter a new phase of life. In the same way, some of my old beliefs may limit me, like a skin grown too tight. If I believe others have kept me from God's good, it may be time to release these old beliefs and forgive. The Spirit of God fills me with unconditional love as I let go of thoughts of anger or hurt which no longer serve me. God loves me, protects me, and provides for me every need. Nothing can change this eternal love. I accept the grace of forgiveness and forgive myself and all others. I grow in love and compassion as I move forward on my spiritual journey. And from Matthew 9, 17, neither is new wine 
put into old wineskins, but new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. And the affirmation for today is, I forgive as I grow in love and compassion. <clears throat> Could you repeat that with me? I forgive as I grow in love and compassion. <clears throat> And once more, I forgive as I grow in love and compassion. century. She'll also be our guest speaker on that Sunday. And our summer spiritual learning classes start in August. Once again, the curriculum committee has done a wonderful job putting together all of these special classes for you. Now, Reverend Sheila, would you please come up? Come on, Sheila. <laughs> Remember that guy from oh, Jazz yeah. Sunday. So this coming Saturday, there will be Jazz Sunday on steroids. <laughs> you will get to hear uh, from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock with a break in between our amazing Sunny <laughs> Sunny Fairly and our own band Fusion put on an amazing concert. So there's still a few tickets left. Come out on the patio. People are there just waiting and willing to sell you some tickets. Don't forget to go out there, though, okay? All right. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like a fun night, Sheila. I cannot wait. I've already got my ticket. I'm so looking forward to it. Is there anybody here for the first time? Ah, thank you. Thanks for letting me know that. 
So we want to really give you a very special welcome to our spiritual community. And we'd love to meet you and we invite you to experience our community as our guest to any one of the activities that are coming up. So if you'll please take the very important presence card out of the seat back in front of you and take it out to the patio. If you chose to, you could come to that event on this Saturday night or any other event that you want to. And we'd like for you to be our very, very special guest to any event that you choose. And if you're willing, is anybody else didn't raise their hand? I know these brave people did. But, ah, there's some more over here. And thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. Oh, we'd like to acknowledge you, and we have a very special blessing for you. So if you're willing to open up to a blessing, what are we, about 200 folks here today? That's about right, okay? So it's a very special time for us to have you here. So we would like to extend a blessing to you. Together, we love you, we bless you, and we hold the light of God shining through you. Thank you so much for joining us. Say that again? We want the shells to stay in the ocean, you know, in the sand. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Okay, I'm, I'm transitioning. You know, we are here to transition, and thank God for unity. I think it's helped me transition a lot. Now, it's time for us to greet each other. So now, please stand up and say hello to your neighbors until the music starts. <laughs> Do you feel the spirit moving? Yep. That's good, because it's time to pray. <laughs> so take that deep breath through your heart. Just wiggle around and get comfortable. 
Oh, and let's, let's take that inner, inner journey where we go in to touch that beautiful divine presence and let the music, and if I remember this music right, it's, it's from the experience of the wonderful Paramahansa Yogananda, I think brought this into our world. And so uh, join in this simple, beautiful chant and let it be part of that guide to the center your heart. Oh God, beautiful. Oh God, beautiful. Oh God, beautiful. Oh God, beautiful. At thy feet, oh, I do bow. that awareness of this love and breathe out releasing ourselves to that presence that enfolds us and guides us so we respond and turn inward as we acknowledge the world and all its activity and questions its demands and its many blessings. So we know that it is important to turn within and rest. Rest at the center of that turning world. To rest in that center that is you. To rest in the peace that we experience in your presence. rest in the love that flows through us enlightening and lifting our lives to rest in the serenity that we know because releasing ourselves to you we know that your divine love unfolds life in its highest so we do let go. We do turn to that center of being. And we enter into that place where we rest with you in silence. Deeper than thought. Deeper than feeling. That place of simply being. Being at one with the one. As you called us through the psalmist, be still and know that I am God. Be still 
and know that I am. Mother, Father, God, infinite love. Beloved presence. We are so grateful that we can send forth this power that is your love, is your presence within us. And so we choose to do that, for to send it, to touch another, is to bring healing, upliftment, abundance, peace. And so from our hearts we radiate this love. We send it first to our own bodies for our healing and well-being. We send it to our minds and hearts for wisdom and understanding. And we radiate this love to each one who is dear to us. And folding them in that love, we know that they are lifted to that which is the highest. And we send this love across the spiritual community, becoming a part of that light and wisdom that flows through each being, blessing everyone in we send it to all those prayer requests that have come here, knowing that with each one, your love is present, lifting them into that which is highest. And we send your love across the communities in which we live, across our nation, healing its fears and bringing forth its great wisdom and compassion. We send this love to all who join us in prayer, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillsides. For in seeking to know you, we are all one. And we radiate this love from our hearts, sending it to Mother Earth, to all her creatures and we send it to the heart of every single person in the earth for you are that love in every heart and in that love we are one divine love flows through my heart enfolding and blessing the world Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, 
enfolding and blessing the world. And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And once again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world.
little children of God. You might just greet your neighbor that way for a moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now that we've got our identities down, we're secure enough to do a little confession thing. We don't have to do that. Some churches do. We just do it because it's good to let go, okay? So I want to I check with you on something. Have you ever had one of those times in your life when you were completely in the dark about whatever was unfolding? You know, you didn't know why, you didn't know which, you didn't know what to do, and you were in the middle of it anyhow. Anybody had one of those? I won't go into the more. I know we could keep count, but okay. Now, because, because we've had that part of the journey. Okay, now let me check in. Have you had those times in your life when you were, you were there, maybe in the, in the midst of challenge, but you knew what was taking place, you were clear, you knew how to work with it, and you were able to, from that place of understanding, really help move through it. Have you had that one too? Anybody? Okay. Okay. It's... I don't know about you, but I like the second one better. <laughs> okay, so, you know, I'm, I thought maybe you just spending a minute on how to get there would be a good idea. And it's, it's a very special thing, that, that experience of having understanding when something is unfolding in our life. It's, it's really a, an experience, if you will, of enlightenment. It's, it's an illumination of the situation. It, come, it brings forth something that we call spiritual understanding. Because you understand, you see more deeply through that spiritual power within you. And that's why you know how to flow with it and work with it. It's always there for us. That light of God illumines your path. Always. That doesn't mean we always see it. <laughs> Some of us have stumbled down the road a long time with our eyes closed. That's okay. The light of God illumines my path. Join me. The light of God illumines my path. Again, the light of God illumines my path. Once again, the light of God illumines my path. Now, there, there's a... a wonderful teaching in the Bhagavad Gita, the Hindu tradition, that puts some of the elements in place that lets that happen. So I, I thought I'd probably greatly misrepresent Krishna. <laughs> but I get to do that. <laughs> and uh, share with you the, the, the steps through this, uh, this particular translation of the, of the Gita. There's a point where Krishna is speaking and he says, with the sword of knowledge, cut asunder the doubt of the self born of ignorance. Okay, with the sword of knowledge, cut asunder the doubt of the self born of ignorance. Residing in the heart, take refuge in the way. So he's got three things there. With the, with the knowledge, okay, with the Sword of knowledge, cut asunder the doubt of the self born of ignorance. Then next, residing in the heart, take refuge in the way, or the, the yoga, or what he's really talking about is our spiritual practice. The ability to give expression to the spiritual uh, principles that we know through that, uh, that path of knowledge. The interesting thing to me there is how he starts out with knowledge. 
I have had a, a wonderful experience. I, I got to be with a, a, an amazing spiritual teacher. And what he said to me was, knowledge precedes transformation. Knowledge precedes transformation. Now, that was surprising to me. First of all, I, I had never perceived it that way at all. And second of all, I realized at the time I didn't fully understand what he was saying. But I thought enough of him that I chose to remember that. Okay, knowledge precedes transformation. And when I began to look at it, what, what's the role of knowledge in all this? I realized that much of our life, we are really learning how to live in this third dimensional experience. Okay, you're a spiritual being having a human experience. And our human experience is primarily in the third dimensional experience, right? So we spend a whole lot of time from the time you're getting up and learning how to walk and run and uh, do all those uh, cute little things that my granddaughter's doing, okay, until we get up to the, you know, and then you do the school thing and you learn and you, you get all the, the tools, the knowledge that it takes to put together life, careers, the skills that end up being uh, how we earn our livings so that we can give, so that we can receive the uh, uh, material abundance that supports our lives, how to put together relationships. Some of us spend a real long time learning how to put together relationships, and sometimes we learn how not to put together relationships. And, but, you know, we, we acquire that knowledge so that we can be here successfully in this third dimensional realm. And somewhere along that way, if you're sitting here, you figured there has got to be more. And you're right. Now, sometime, for some of us, it was when we were quite young. Others, it really began to mature someplace in our adulthood. But we began gaining the knowledge of the fourth dimensional part of our experience. That which we access through our spiritual nature. And that takes study and knowledge as well. Now, it doesn't give us the experience of that higher level of consciousness and awareness. It's not the knowledge that does that. What the knowledge does is it gives us the tools to focus our attention to do it, and it says to the mind, it's okay to cooperate and accept this. Because we've all had a lot of spiritual experiences that we didn't know what to do with. And so we pretty well suppressed them. I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of you here that uh, the story that's so familiar to me is the, the person in childhood is going along and they're, you know, they're, they're playing with angels. They're having a ball and somebody tells them, you can't do that. Oh, and so they stop. You know, they, they, the spiritual ability that you have, the, well, the reason we learn and we study is so that we can say to the mind, it's all right to accept this. Okay, it's all right to focus and take these steps because there is more than I can see through my third dimensional perception. There's more than my five senses are going to tell me about. So knowledge. That's one of the reasons why here we, we have such a focus on knowledge. And a, a week from now, we've had these ama this amazing week of spiritual study, our uh, uh, SAE classes coming up. And for a whole week, just getting in and studying in depth, like that whole relationship that you have with the divine or the the amazing understandings that are a part of spiritual healing, or the, how to really look at things like the, the scriptures and perceive in there not, not this limited stuff that everybody's talking about, but the amazing wisdom that's, that's hidden within them. Tremendous things to learn and work with. And, the, and there's, a, there's a whole one on, on the power of prayer. Now, in Krishna's steps, that's part of the tools. Every 
religious path uses prayer because it works. So, again, knowledge, tremendously important. But there's, a, there's another part of it. And so for that part, I want to go to, to Jesus. He says, or actually, many translations in years after he said, somebody remembered, told it to somebody else in languages and <laughs> all later. One version that we get is... <laughs> The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. Okay. If thine eye be single, he goes on. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light as when a light shining of a lamp gives you light. So he's talking about both inner and outer illum illumination. Okay, he's talking about the experience of enlightenment. Okay, if your eye be single, he's not talking about this one. He's talking about the ability spiritually to perceive the presence of God. If you see one, you see that one power, if you see that it's all God, then that light can move in and through you and give you that understanding. It can illumine that which is within and that which is unfolding without. Beautiful, beautiful teaching. And probably I've thoroughly distorted it, but I love it that way. So the understanding that's there, that, that single, if the eye be single, or another translation is if it be good, if you are able to see the goodness, the, the, in other words, the godness, the, the presence of the one, what we know is we know how to get there. That is a higher fourth dimensional perception where we just see the one. We don't see good, bad, right, wrong, should, shouldn't, you know, you blew it, all that stuff. It disappears at that level of spiritual awareness that for label sakes we call higher fourth dimensions where you just see, see the one. And with that comes a deep understanding. Very beautiful experience, and it's what happened when you understood that challenge and how to work with it. So we aren't talking about something where angels come down and all sorts of stuff. We're just talking about a capability completely within you. The light of God illumines my path. Join me. The light of God illumines my path. Now, I want to, want to touch it in a way that we look at what, what that kind of looks like. Because th this is great. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, I want to share with you uh, the experience of a woman. Her name is Betty Sheets. And Betty, now Betty was an adult when this occurred. She was actually uh, professionally a nurse. And she was dealing with her father. Her father was, uh, was uh, in a, a state of illness. Okay, he had a disease. And so Betty wanted to connect with her father. Now, that was a little hard. She said, honestly, she was afraid of her father. Very angry man. Uh, very reactive. And a, a great separation uh, rather than, than connection with her and, and family. But realizing that this, this was a very difficult time for him, she really wanted to uh, be there, be supportive, and connect with him. So she uh, you know, go, goes up to him, he's sitting there, and she sits next to him and takes his hand, and he takes his hand away and turns away from her. Um, and so she's going on, how, how am I going to work with this? And she realizes, okay, one of the things that you know, he'll respect and listen about, because she's a nurse, she, she can talk about the physical things. So she begins and says to him, uh, you know, how, how are you doing? And then he just grunts and looks away. And she says, well, Dan, I want to tell you about 
this disease because it, it's, it was a, a lung disease. And she said, there's often a great experience of fear around this disease. She says, when people have a hard time taking a breath, they get very frightened. And when that happens, the fear exacerbates the reaction and they end up with an asthma attack. So knowing how to work with your fear is very important. She said, I wanted to tell you that because I had an experience where I had a great deal of fear and I learned how to work with it. So I wanted to share that with you. She says, so what I did was I, I was just uh, feeling this great amount of fear that was overwhelming me and I realized I couldn't do it by myself. So uh, she talks about entering into an experience of prayer. And in this experience of prayer, she just imagined that God was there with her and she could take and just let all that fear flow into her hands and then just hold them out and let God take that from her. That infinite power of the divine taking what was greater than she was able to deal with. She said she just felt that go away and then she felt very free. And the next week, apparently, the situation, whatever it was, reoccurred and she was able to be there without the fear in dealing with it. So a very wonderful, meaningful way of working that she was sharing with her father. And his first response was, you're stupid. And then, God doesn't answer my prayers. God is against me. So she waited. And he went on and said, and explained a, about a time when she was probably uh, eight or nine years old. And he, he was a farmer. And they'd had some very rough years. And as a result, uh, poor crops and you know, weather and pests and all that, they were, they were in debt. And this year, he had a wonderful crop. So he's outside in a field, and he said he sees these huge clouds. He knows that, that one of the possibilities of those clouds where they lived is hailstorm. So he, he prayed and asked God to protect his crops from the hail, from damage. Storm came through, wiped out his crops. Okay, he and one other guy, the only ones, hit by the hail, completely wiped out. Does Betty listen to her father? She did an amazing thing. She chose compassion. Instead of reacting to his anger and rejection, she thought of how he had been alone ever since that point. How oh, you're just fighting against everything. Because he had no sense of that love or support. And in her compassion, she felt moved to ask him a question. What would have happened if your prayer had been answered. And what he said was, I would have paid off the debt. You know, I would have been free. And she asked, what would have happened if you paid off the debt. And he thought about it. And he said, well, we'd have probably been like before, pests and weather, and I'd have been poor again. She said, Dan, I think your prayer was answered. I think you got moved out of a work 
that couldn't support you or your family. You got moved out of that and into the cattle business and there you were very successful. Financially and otherwise, you weren't just cattlemen, you were viewed as a great cattleman. And we never went hungry. We never didn't have clothes. We never did without something that we needed. I said, I think your prayer was answered. Just not in the way that you thought it should be. That is spiritual understanding. To see something that looked so wrong. And I have no doubt that every one of us can look out at the world and see some things that look so wrong. Or in our own lives. And lay a few out. But what she saw, what her education let her know, that spiritual education let her know that there was something greater present than what she could see at the third dimension. That there is a greater intelligence and power responding to us and our prayers. And that she had the capability of seeing it. So she looked for the one with that single eye. And it illumined the situation before it so she could share with her father. And one of the beautiful things of illumination is it does get shared. She after a very long pause, was about to get up and leave. When he reached over and took her hand and said, pray with me. He'd come to that point where he could ask for the help that he needed, knowing there was something greater responding. Again, spiritual understanding is a, it's a beautiful thing. As we meet these challenges, and the wonderful thing about this day and age is we get to meet more faster than we ever did before. <laughs> it's so exciting. Instead of being on a spiritual ride, we are on a spiritual rocket. <laughs> and this makes tremendous difference because the light of God illumines your path. Say it with me. The light of God illumines my path. Again, the light of God illumines my path. It's right there, right now. Once again, the light of God illumines my path. It does. The knowledge is wonderful, but the knowledge doesn't give the freedom. What she did was choose compassion. As Krishna said, resting in the heart. Because that is the road to that higher perception. That is the road to that beautiful spiritual light that illumines your path and your path is filled with amazing goodness. Bless you. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Well, now, if you would like prayer support for either challenges or celebrations, please ask one of our heart ministers. They're available after the service here in the sanctuary or out on the patio, and you can find them by the lavender slashes that they wear. 
You're also invited to put in a prayer request in our prayer box, either by the front door or out in our book center. Or you can even go online and click the button that says prayer request, and we'll be praying with you through the week. Now it's time for our prosperity celebration. So I encourage you to take your tithes and your love offerings in your hands. And for love in action or credit card donations, there are envelopes provided in the back of your chair. And now I invite you to take into your heart and affirm with me that God is the source of all of our good by repeating our affirmation together. Together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And we are grateful. I think it's a good afternoon now. I wanted to give you a small translation. I just want to acknowledge that um, as I'm sitting here um, listening to you, Reverend David, that I had a, um, a vision of myself when I was back in Hawaii um, coming here and singing for you. And then uh, the first time that vision came to me, I went, are you kidding me? I live in Hawaii and I have three kids and I can't possibly see how that is possible. A month later, I was here. And um, God definitely illumined my path to lead me um, here before you. There are three words I'd like to um, tell you the meaning of. The first is aloha. A lot of us have heard it and have thought that it meant or been told. It means hello, goodbye, and love. Ha is our life essence. And when we greet one another, we breathe in each other's life. Aloha. I breathe in who you are, and I exhale who I am. Keakua. Kua is God. Aloha keakua. The love of God. And then kuleana. A lot of times in Hawaii, this is your kuleana, is how you hear it um, spoken amongst the people of Hawaii. So we're going to talk about the love of God and living from that is your responsibility, your kuleana. Thank you. <laughs> change in the 
every single day. The clarity, it comes to me in choppy waves. The feelings, the places, the seasons change. The galaxies remain. Energy fields pulling about in space. Angels that are coming to a spiritual waste. The hate that keeps me from my spiritual pace. Tenfold the mana when the planets are in place. And polar alignment, yes, we're on assignment. Bodies on consignment, return them to the circus. What is the purpose? What is the purpose? And would you believe it? Would you believe it if you knew what you were for and how you became so informed? Bodies of info. Forming such miracles. I am a miracle made up of particles. And in this existence, I'll stay persistent and I'll make a difference. Cause I would have lived Aloha, aloha.
embrace them with your love. And let's bless our children together. Children, you are loved, special, and important. God loves you, and so do we. And we receive these gifts, knowing that the true gift given is that commitment on each of our hearts to touch this world in a way that brings forth its wholeness, its beauty, and its peace. In the Christ joy, amen. So let's stand and take hands or balls and share together <laughs> our prayer of protection. There we go. Together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. And our peace song. and the light and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun. Bye. 